My hands hurt so bad I thought I had RSI. But it wasn't the keyboard, it was the switches. After spending over $440 and months of frustration, I finally found the ones that saved my hands. And I'm going to save you that pain. These three switches that you see on the screen might look similar, but the difference between them is night and day. I've been using the Glove 80 every single day since August 2024. That's been over a year. It was my first mechanical keyboard ever. I came from the Apple's Magic Keyboard, which feels like typing on butter. That's by far my favorite keyboard. When I first got to the Glove 80, I ordered it with the Red Pro switches. And I thought they were fine until I started feeling unease. If you watched my previous video or my first video on the Glove 80, you know that I love the layout, the ergonomics, everything. Except the Red Pros felt janky, they felt wobbly, I didn't feel them secure. Additionally, I didn't like the sound at all. When I was typing on those switches, I typed slower, my fingers felt tired, and I started to think that maybe mechanical keyboards were just a scam that people invented to sell stuff. I don't know, a lot of stuff came to mind. But imagine telling your wife that you're not happy with the $400 keyboard you just purchased that was supposed to solve all your problems in the first place. Well, you're an arch user, you wouldn't understand. But I had to fake it and suck it up like a real man. So I kept using the Glove 80 even when I hated the way the switches felt. I reached out to Steven, the creator of the Glove 80, and told him exactly what was going on. He mentioned that new switches were being developed for the Glove 80. Those switches were the Plum Blossoms and the Cherry Blossoms. At the time, I decided to go with the Plum Blossoms. That was mistake number one. The Plum Blossoms were silent, stable, and smooth. They felt incredible for the first few weeks. Typing was satisfying, consistent, and quiet. It was like falling in love with the mechanical keyboards again. But after about a month, I started to notice something strange. My fingertips felt tingly, almost numb. Then the pain spread to the joints. It wasn't the keyboard layout this time. I think it was the actuation force. The Plum Blossoms are around 10 grams heavier than the Red Pros. And that difference, I think, was enough to mess me up. So... After purchasing those switches, I decided to switch back to the Red Pros because comfort is what I needed when typing, even if I hated the Red Pros. When I switched back to the Red Pros, my hands still hurt for a few days, but the pain kind of disappeared afterwards. So that's when I made my second expensive mistake. I bought another top shell set. This time, it was the Cherry Blossoms. They took a while to arrive, but when they finally did, everything changed. At least, I think so. I feel that these switches are the perfect balance between the other two. They're soft enough not to tire my fingers, and stable enough to feel precise, and silent enough so that I can record without hearing the noise. I don't know if you knew this about me, but I just don't like clicky switches. I don't like to hear their sound. Matter of fact, I kind of hate the sound on switches. I don't like it at all. I find it really distracting, but that's just me. You know, there's a whole world out there of people that love clicky switches. It's a thing, but me, no. I'm an old man, just like silent stuff. The cherry blossoms feel softer and more consistent. They don't wobble like the red pros. They don't fight back like the plum blossoms. They're not as hard. In my opinion, they're just a middle ground, exactly what I needed. Now, there's something that you need to keep in mind about accidental key presses. I have heard some people in the Discord server for the Glove 80 keyboard or on Reddit that they have or that they experience accidental key presses with the Cherry Blossom switches because they're too soft. Personally, I haven't experienced that at all. I'm not sure if my hands are just weak or something or if I place them correctly on the keyboard. 
maybe those guys are construction workers or they have the Hulk hands. I don't know what's going on, but I put my hands on the keyboard. I type normally and it has never happened to me that I accidentally press any keys. I don't hold my fingers on the keyboard a lot. I do it on the arms here. My arms are basically sustaining all the weight of the hands and my fingers are just there laying. I'm not putting a lot of force there. So I'm not sure if it's a skill issue on their side or I don't know, my hands are too weak and soft, which I don't think so well they are. Who knows? But just keep that in mind. And I'm just talking about my personal experience here. That has never happened to me at all. Now, I have some thoughts about switches. If you're coming from something like Apple's Magic Keyboard, something soft, something low travel, something quiet, I wouldn't risk it and I would go for the Cherry Blossoms. I wouldn't go for the Red Pros um, and I wouldn't go for the Plum Blossoms either. I'm talking about a beginner's perspective, okay? Don't make the same mistake that I did. I spent $800 so far, over $800 on the keyboard so uh, i'm just trying to save you some money here if you're gonna try something try the cherry blossoms if you want to hear my advice i know you won't you're just gonna jump to the next video anyway and continue you know searching but if you decide to go with an additional switch then i would like you to come back to this video six months after and reflect on what you did and remember that i told you so now, that was from the perspective of a beginner. If you already know what you're doing, if you already have tried the Red Pros, if you like them for a strange reason that I cannot comprehend, if you like instability and if you like jankiness, well, you already know what you're doing. If you like browns or if you like whites, I don't know what any other type of switches are. I don't care, to be honest. But if you know what you're doing, just go with what your heart says. Just keep in mind that the switches on the Glove 80 are not hot swappable. They're soldered. So if you want to replace them, you have to get completely a new top shell, which is over $200, 220, I think to be exact. Now, I just want you to listen how these sound. Let me put some switches on the Plum Blossoms first, okay? So that you can see that. I'm just gonna put some keycaps there. Okay, so now that is done, let's start with the um, Red Pros, okay? Here are the Red Pros. Here you can see the color of the switches is basically what changes. Let's listen to the sound. The space bar usually sounds different because you press that harder. Um, let's see. That's the space bar with the thumb. Let's just try the home row. Okay, here are the plum blossoms. These are silent switches, by the way, which is something that I love a lot. Let's hear them again. Let's try the cherry blossoms, which are the ones that I'm currently using. They probably sound similar to the plum blossoms. Let's hear.
Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly switch between the three of them. Now, something you need to keep in mind is that it doesn't have the thing on the back, so the sound may be not too accurate without this on the back, but it gives you a general idea. These are not too clicky, but they're not silent either. There's some noise that comes out of them. It's not like whites or something really clicky. These are silent. I love these. They're pretty good. And also the cherry blossoms are silent as well, okay? But these do have the thing on the back, so the sound may be a little bit different. These two are the ones that are silent. Just keep that in mind. The plum blossoms and the cherry blossoms, which are the ones that I use. Now, as you're able to tell, I'm not using all the keys on my Glove 80 now. I'm just using 40 out of the 80 keys. There's a reason behind that. I covered that in some videos. I'm going to leave the link in the video description so you can go and check that video out and understand what's going on. But basically, I order a corn min prototype, which is a flat version of the corn that is expected to come around, I don't know, December or maybe next year. I don't know when. And I want to compare the Glove 80, the corn, and tell you which keyboard I like better. Is concavity a good thing or is it not? I want to compare the two of them. So that's why I'm using just 40 keys. I also realized that I don't need the keys here. They're too far away. The numbers and the F keys are too far away. The thumb cluster as well, I thought I loved it at the beginning, but I realized that my thumb has to stretch a lot, you know? Now it's resting here and it's good, but I had to be doing this and it kind of hurts, you know, after doing it for a long period of time. So I'm just not putting too much pressure on my thumb anymore. But I'm going to review that in future videos. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you want to know more about that. And also, I released a pretty interesting video yesterday in which I explain how I use the same layout on the Glove 80 and on my MacBook built-in keyboard using Kanata on the MacBook built-in keyboard. Here, I use ZMK and I capture some um, F keys combined with modifiers in a tool in macOS that allows me to execute scripts. I'm also going to leave that video linked in the video description. So the last thing that I want to do is thank the CEOs, Web23, web23.com. I also want to thank the executive producers, the YouTube members, and all the people that watch my videos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment down below. Don't comment on Discord about my videos. That doesn't help me at all. So if you want to support me, just subscribe, comment down below, and like the video. Okay, so that's it for today. Hope this video was useful. See you in the next one.